Hello everyone, Alex RC Freak here coming at you with another video. And this is a video on the Arma Creighton 8S. So if you notice, I bent up these body posts right here to make it, let me get my little pointer out here. So I bent up these body posts right here just to make it easier to, because instead of, see how much these stretch when you pull on them? So this way you can just clip it and use your thumb it's just it's really slick so it's a plastic thing sometimes it gets in the way when it rotates but uh i, I got the uh proline trenchers the mx43 trenchers on here so for the x max and i drilled the center hole out to 19 millimeter on the rim here where it goes in um I bought these from my brother, um, Poison RC. Uh, he's a good guy, so please check out his channel. It's Poison RC. Um, that's his channel. He has a lot of good stuff on there, a lot of cool rigs. Um, this is my crane. Like, I apologize. I have not did a running video yet. It's just like we're on this whole quarantine BS. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but uh, like one of my buddies. Uh, buddies went out and he actually his buddy got fined my friend's friend I guess you could say got fined like so for going out and stuff like that because he went to a park and I guess the guy caught him so um yeah I don't really right now I'm laid off currently so I don't really want to get in the middle of that if that makes any sense so it's been really sucky for me but I guess this gives me time to get all my stuff dialed in um so anyway what we're doing here is an upgrade Okay, so basically, body's off. Yes, this is the original model, and yes, I do have adapters that I made. Um, just because I didn't want to deal with this third wire, but um, I do like how they have a cat pack on top of the cat pack on the the speak tool. It's only a 4S capable one though, so really does no justice to 8s power but whatever so anyway like i say this is brand new so i'm gonna bring you over see if you guys can uh see this too super well i'm gonna see hopefully you guys i'm gonna try to get you guys in as best the angle as i can get you guys in so just please bear with me seriously so what we're doing here if you zoom in so what we're doing here is replacing the steering servo with a better one because this steering servo Arma says it's like 485 ounces of torque. I say BS. I, I know this servo. I guarantee you it's not actually pushing 485 ounces of torque. So I can guarantee that actually. So and the way to design this truck steering, I, I think it's garbage, to be honest. I like the truck. I really think it's garbage the way to design the steering. It's like I don't know. I just think it's going to be like one of those things that's going to fail. So, anyway, with further ado, you want to, we got to take off this speed control. Um, take out the screw right here. There's a nut. Here, let me get this on the other side so you guys can see that. It barely fits on the table, as you can tell. Sorry about that. Let me get you a better view. So, anyway, there's a two millimeter nut here. I may change the screw out if I can find an extra screw line around to a socket head style. This is a button head style, 2 millimeter. I may try to change it out to a 2.5 button head style. Um, and then uh, just note, I put a little marker there with a Sharpie. You probably can't see it in the video. It, it's I straightened the wheels with electronics on, with everything powered on right now. It obviously, it's powered off, but I did this when I first got it when I was testing everything, and I marked it. I marked the, uh, from this center point right here. Let's see if you can see that. It's probably going to get real blurry real quick. But there's a little center notch right here. And I marked it, and then see that little mark right there? I marked it, and I used a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, and I marked it right there. So that way, we can find center. So, anyway. Let's see if we can get a better view. So, Anyway, I marked that as straight as I could get it 
and then I mark this and that. So I'm going to straighten this. This toe's this toe's a little off. I don't like this big old bulky steering servo saver garbage that Arma failed when they did the steering on this. I don't care what anyone says. Plain and simple, upgraded servo or not, they completely bombed the steering bell crank design on this vehicle. They bombed it. So that's my opinion. So you guys can hate me for that, whatever. I don't know. The truth is truth, I guess. But anywho, because it's just, it's a crappy design. When you actually take it apart, it's just garbage. A lot of them they put on wrong on the factory and stripped out those splines, those 15 2 splines. They just, I don't know, they messed up. So, anywho, we're going to start off by you steer it a little bit this way. Use a 2 millimeter Allen. I'm just going to use hand tools today. The charger for my power drill decided to, now be very careful, there's a nut on the bottom side here. There's a nut, so when you take this off, my recommendation, sorry if my hand's in the way there, so you just pop this off. There's a nut that goes inside there. So I'm going to take this and just thread, thread it back in. Just a little bit. Yeah, there's a nut. So you don't want to lose that. You just thread it in until it hits. It's a lock nut. So this is threads. Now I wish they made this arm longer. Like out here, it would give you more throw. And there's all the room to do it. So I don't know why they didn't. Next, unplug the motor. So that's the fan. You just grab these very carefully. Plug them out. Grab them very carefully, unplug them. You do that, and you can just move this off to the side, okay, just like so. Now, I don't. One thing I don't like about this motor is that the wires are very stiff. They're very they're a stiff wire. So, anywho, now that you got that all loosened up, uh, you got the steering servo loosened up. Now I'm gonna line that up. So anyway, now we got to flip the vehicle over to, uh, okay, so you got one, two, three, four screws. I'm going to take those off and then the electronics module will completely, everything will come out at once. It's really nice once the motor is unplugged. So let me do that. Okay, just to show you real quick, you got one, two three four screw holes or screws you have to take out so just to show you where they are with the underneath side of your chassis as you can tell this is literally brand new still haven't had time to run it quick note this little bearing thing make sure you do not lose it there's a screw that goes inside here it goes in there just like that this very easily falls out so be careful care, careful you do not lose that um, and you'll probably, you'll be all right. So I'm just going to clean out my parts holder thing real quick that holds my screws. And I'm just going to put all the screws in here. So stick them off to one side. So now you may be asking, what server are you putting in here? Good question. It's a true fit scale, Savox. SV-0236 MG, 555 ounces of torque at 7.4 volts. So it's pretty beefy servo, it really is. It's a really beefy servo. So that's what I'm putting on here. It's a 15-2 spline. In case you're wondering, this is not waterproof. I did a silicone conformal coating on the circuit board to give me a little added protection. So. Anywho, you do not need to remove the speed control. You shouldn't have to. So what you want to do, there's a little Allen there. It's four or five millimeter Allen. Righty loosey, lefty tidy. So, and it's made like that on purpose. Let me find the Allen real quick. I'll get back with you. So, you turn it right to loosen it. It's a four millimeter Allen. So just so you know, turn it clockwise to loosen it, counterclockwise to not loosen it, or to tighten it. 
It's been a little bit of a morning, so please bear with me. So let me see if I can get you guys a good view of that. So anyway, you got a 2.5 millimeter Allen in there. I know it's hard to see in the camera. Um, I'm trying to get you guys some better view. I want to see. Now, if you notice, there's a little line here and there's a little line here. So just make sure to make note of that. It helps keep it centered. And this one is lefty loosey, uh, righty tidy for this bolt here. And this is setting the tension. So how tight this is is setting the tension on how uh, much of a servo saver spring you want. So let me get my hand out of the way here. And you just loosen the screw. It's a little bit of a long one. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so take this off. Now that's what it looks like on the inside. Now being very careful, there's little splines in there, okay? See how there's little splines in there? You wanna be careful not to mix match that up a little bit. Now you got two springs in here. Now I'm gonna rock this off. I might just use a flathead. It's probably what I'll just do, end up doing. Use the flathead. Just like that. So, um, I'm surprised I didn't get, I got Loctite on it, but I'm surprised I didn't get bombarded with Loctite because my brother, RC Poison, his uh, was like completely Loctite. Now check your splines. See how my splines all look okay? That's luck. I'm just gonna set that down like that. Now, you got four millimeter Allens right there to take out. And you'll also have one Oh, let me get this light a little better for you. You'll also have one, two, three, four, five, six screws to take off the receiver box. So I'm going to do all that. I'm going to take all this off and I'll get back to you when I have this new servo put in. Now make sure the servo goes in this way. Okay, also, when you do this true fist scale servo, this is a one six scale servo mount. You'll need the Arma receiver box. Now, if you, you can go online, it's the Arma receiver box. And this has the standard receiver box in it. And this also has the fist scale receiver box in it. I also bought this for my buddy because he was gonna put this in his crate and he decided to go a different route. Um, he already ripped off this thing, no big deal. If you go online, look up Arma 8S, Crate and 8S, receiver box set. This is what it comes with. It comes with the standard one and the fist scale one. So just make sure you use the fist scale one. So just to show you, this is the fist scale receiver box. It does come with an extra one of these. So make sure you don't lose that. You can just stick that right there. Um, you can reuse the original one. But this is just to go to show you, it won't fit. Now, if you shaved it down, probably get it to work. You shave down like literally two millimeters on each side, you'd probably get it to work. But it actually comes with two of these, believe it or not. So, um, anyway, or you could just get the right one and, and use it. Now, see how this one says five on it right there? That's for fist scale. This one says six. See how it says six? That's for one six scale servos. Just just to make a note of that, all right? See how this one says six? Six. Six scale servos. So just make a note of that. This Montana tube, it must have fell off or ripped it out by accident. Whoopsie. So I'm going to get this all set up and I'll get back to you once I got everything bolted in. Okay, so... I got it in. I use the factory screws. Now the factory screws have these special washers right here. See how they're flanged? Now you guys can see a little better that way. Turn off the light. I'm trying to get you guys a better view here. I got these new LED light bulbs. 100, or it's like 1,600 luminas or something like that. And uh, yeah, they're pretty bright. Sometimes they can have a glare. So anyway, 
These are the washers that they come with. Factory seal, they have that little lip there. So anyway, you have to get rid of those and get a four millimeter flat washer. I usually keep stock washers, three millimeter flat washers, four millimeter flat washers. Um, I usually keep stock all kinds of shims, stuff like that. It screws, you know what I'm saying? I use the factory screws that came with it. They thread into this just perfectly fine. Um, you have to force it a little bit. They're a three millimeter Allen. You have to socket head Allen right here. You have to kind of force it. And then, you know, I use a little ratchet. This ratchet, you just kind of got to get it on there and push down and then start tightening and it'll tighten. Just, you know, I put the rubber grommets on. You kind of have to work them into this rubber grommet. You know what I'm saying? But I like having these rubber grommets on servos. It protects the servo a little bit from vibration and crap. So you do have to take out the factory. This is a factory receiver. Sorry about the car noise, but you do have to take that out. Use double-sided tape. This is 3, 3M automotive grade tape. Use double-sided tape to, uh, to do it. So you got to use this stuff. Um, I always like to spray a little bit of an adhesion promoter. It's completely clear. The fuser adhesion promoter is completely clear. You don't have to do adhesion promoter since I'm an auto body guy. It's kind of a habit, I guess. But anyway, this is the factory receiver box that came with your uh, vehicle. Yes, the antenna, I have it. The tube's right here. I have it. It just pulled out from the grub screw, so it doesn't matter. Now, when you do this, just make sure that there's these rubber little things here. Make sure you put them on and make sure your gas gets correctly seated in here. Make sure that gas gets correctly seated. So when you do this, you also want to make sure that you don't pinch any of the wiring. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to, one thing I like about electric versus nitro nowadays is that it's cheaper to run. It's a little bit more expensive for the vehicle, but the, the, uh, it seems like the nitros, they aren't built nearly as strong unless you got the team associated Munster GT 8.0 CC. That RC is a tank. I have two of them. They're, it's just, they're a beast. It's like one of the strongest RCs I've ever had. So these are two millimeter flathead tapered Allens. Um, I'm, there's six of them. I'm going to put them in there, bolt the receiver box down, um, plug in your uh, steering servo. And you're good to go. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll get ready to put this uh, servo uh, horn on. Alrighty. So I got it on there. I tested it. You basically plug in batteries to your speed control. And you just make sure this is where it needs to be. Now this is supposed to be at an angle like this. If you notice... You can't really see it, but see that little mark? It's kind of hard to see. It's very hard to see. You see that little mark right there? A little Sharpie mark? Maybe if I bring over the light, you guys will be able to see it a little better. But see that Sharpie mark? See how they line up? Let's see. Okay, so I have marked it right there. I marked it all the way there, and I marked it there. Well, this center thing right here. I marked it. So that is supposed to be like that. That's how it's supposed to look. Now, make sure with this, you have the bearing on there. This little thing, it comes with two of them. The receiver kit, it's in there. And then you got this. I had to put a little lock washer on there to shim that bolt because the bolt was a little too long and it wasn't quite sucking in this all the way. And if you can tell, it still could be sucked in a little bit more. But I don't want to put too much load on that servo. That's why I don't like this servo saver design. I think it's complete garbage. But uh, if I'd have seen C-Machine that, trust me, I'd be making some RC parts, and I know mine would be some pretty good design stuff if I'd have seen C-Machine, but I do not, so sad me. But anyway, but bam. You basically stick that on there, then you stick it back in the truck, just like how it came off. You got four screws right here to... Put it in. I'm going to do that off camera because it's pretty easy to do. You plug in the fan and then CBA or ABC for the motor. The motor will tell you on the back of it which one's A, B, and C. Make sure you get those polarities correct. 
or the motor can be reversed. So, or you could possibly get an error code on the speed control. So, anywho, I'm going to do that real quick. And thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Just make sure before you completely bolt this down to make sure that's centered. But mark this and the top of your receiver thing. This was a lifesaver. So, anyway, it ended up working out for me. And I hope it works out for you guys. So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And Alex RC Freak out. Peace.